Now, when Sam Tarry, a minister, shadow minister, was sacked from the front bench for standing by striking workers, uh, I've known Sam Tarry for a very long time, by the way, I was pretty annoyed, actually. I was, I was irritated, to say the least. So I did a little video. I did a rant. I like to rant. Get it out of my system. Now, Keir Starmer went on the Jeremy Vine show, which I'm a regular on. I am, in fact, on tomorrow, Monday, uh, again, to, to catch me there. Um, so he, the video was put to him and then his reaction. So let's just have a look at this clip. I mean, I'll show you a little clip of, of Owen Jones, who's on this show a lot. Have a look at this. Keir Starmer is a professional political combat. He has brazenly, overtly delivered the exact opposite of what he said he would be as Labour leader. I know his army of supporters online, the most tedious, ridiculous Waitrose customers that you'll ever come across, they, they think it's all fine. But the fact is, that is the truth. He is a con man. He is not someone anyone can trust. I'm not focused on Owen. I'm sorry, Owen. I know Owen. <laughs> I like Owen. I'm not focused on Owen. You're focused because... on Waitrose customers. No, no, no. I'm, I'm focused intently on winning the next general election. Because we can talk about what we're going to do uphill and downdale. Until we win an election, we won't do it. The Labour Party's lost four elections in a row. Owen was a cheerleader of the last attempt, and we failed. If we carry on like that, we are letting millions of people down. So I took a decision to take the Labour Party from where we were when I took over, which was the worst general election defeat since 1935, change the Labour Party, make it face the voters and talk about what they wanted to talk about, put practical ideas on the table. How do you pay your bills this winter? Who's going to pay for it? Uh, in the hope that we can get a Labour government, because uh, we desperately need a change. And that is what I'm absolutely determined to bring about. Now, Starmer supporters love this online. They were like, Owen Jones must be a fan of nationalisation because he just got publicly owned by Keir Starmer. I wasn't quite sure why he was owned, I had to say. I was trying to work it out because he didn't obviously engage with the accusation, which is that he ran a deceitful leadership campaign where he made a series of promises which he then broken, which he then broke. Um, and that makes him a con man because someone who 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 wins someone's confidence through deception and deceit. Um and then betrays those promises. I mean, what is that other than being a con man? I mean, I, 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 some people might go, well, I mean, oh, goodness grief, throwing these words around con man. It's such an aggressive, violent term. I don't think it is. I think it's just, yeah, if you just, if you deceitfully gain trust only to betray that trust, then you've, you're a con man. <laughs> um, now, obviously, he, he tried, I mean, when he says he knows me, I don't know. I mean, I've not gone on a camping trip with him. I'm quite sure what he meant by that. Um, one of my uh, long-standing best friends was his right-hand man for a very long time. He was someone I've known since 2007, I think. I did actually go on holiday with him, actually. Um, so I I suppose I knew uh, Keir Starmer vaguely through that. I'd interviewed Keir Starmer. Um, I think in hindsight, kind of annoyed because I did videos with Keir Starmer about Brexit because he was Labour's Brexit spokesperson but i think to be honest um i was being used to kind of have videos which presented him in a you know that will just you know a lot of my videos are watched by labor party members so you know do interviews with me hopefully they quite like him when they watch the interviews that was that was the, that was the idea i would say um during the leadership contest um keir starmer's team told me repeatedly that they wanted john mcdonald to stay shadow chancellor they rang me when well, I remember about the top 5% income tax uh, promise, which was that they would keep the um, the Labour Party manifesto commitment in 2017 and 2019 to hike income tax for the top 5%. They rang me to say absolute cast iron because I was worried about the wording. It's cast iron. We're going to stick to that. Absolutely. I promise you. I promise you that. Um, a load of left wing commentators were brought together in a pub in King's Cross by Keir Starmer's team um, where he was obviously there. Um, uh, you know, kind of trying to present his left-wing credentials. And I had a chat with Keir Starmer there. I don't care about just, I mean, it's just like, am I revealing confidence? I mean, like, if, you're gonna, if he's going to be dishonest, I'm not, I'm not, it's not like I'm betraying a big confidence here, but I'll just, just explain. So I had a chat with Keir Starmer there and I said, well, actually, you know, you're making all these radical commitments. You, you know, you're going to stick by them. He's like, absolutely, absolutely sticking by them. Yeah. Um, and I said, well, you know, it's just a lot of the MPs don't like those policies at all. Like they, they really won't. So will you put up a fight against any pressure by right-wing Labour MPs 
to water those commitments uh, down. And he said, well, I, absolutely, you know, I'm being elected as leader of the Labour Party with a very specific mandate. And one of the things I asked him about was tuition fees, about abolishing tuition fees and keeping that. He said, that has to stay. Of course, that has to stay. Uh, they're already talking about abandoning that pledge. Um, they were talking about doing that. Uh, it was they brief, briefing the papers about, about abandoning that commitment altogether, which doesn't surprise me because a lot of the people around Keir Starmer made their, cut their teeth in, right, in student politics, basically fighting against people who support free education. So that's kind of like an article of faith for them. It's like, a, you know, they really want to die in that ditch. Um, yeah, so um, after he became leader, he would occasionally text me in quite a thin-skinned way because what would happen is I would criticise him on Twitter and then he would text me kind of being irritated about it. And I kind of thought, not to belittle myself, but you've got better things to do with your time. And we were going to meet up um, when he, just like a few months after being leader, we didn't. The the, 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 the conversation, the last conversation I had with him was um, I, it was after Jamie, it was, it was, a few, it was in the period after Jamie Corbyn obviously had his whip suspended. And my, I said that I think the people around him want to crush the left. That, that, you know, that's how it comes across to me. Um, and he was, he said to me, it's just not, I have no interest in crushing the left. No interest in crushing the left. Um, you know, for me, it's about weeding out anti-Semitism, which I don't regard as a left-right issue. Um, and um, then a few months later, he introduced... Uh, we attempted to reintroduce the electoral college for the leadership rules um, in order uh, to stitch up the party's internal rules to stop anyone on the left ever being able to be leader of the Labour Party again. And in the end, they changed it with a threshold so that you had to get the support of 20% of the parliamentary party in order to get on the ballot paper. You know, it's just done to stop anyone left wing becoming leader of the Labour Party. So obviously, uh, you know, I last time I spoke to him then, I'm, oh yeah, he spoke to me before that. We, I think when I had COVID, he sent you know sent me a message or something. But I, after that, I I just I just texted and went that was a lie, which it was. It was a lie. And do you know what? I'm not having it. I'm not having this ludicrous situation where it is acceptable for the leader of the Labour Party to have brazenly, openly, wantonly lied in the way he has. I'm sick to death of those hypocrites who are his cheerleaders online. I made a flippant joke about Waitrose. Honestly, these people, they, 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 they're acting like that was a hate crime. I shop at Waitrose. There's a Waitrose down the road. I shop at Waitrose sometimes. I said the most tedious Waitrose customers, by the way. It's a self, you, you can self -isolate, self exclude yourself from that group. I wasn't saying all Waitrose. I'm a Waitrose customer. Um, oh dear. Um, I, I was just saying there's a very specific, you know, disproportionately quite privileged group of a certain age who are wedded to very aggressively centrist politics who hate the left um, and don't really believe in anything. Politics for them is vibes. It's about vibes, not substance, which is why they like people like Rory Stewart, even though he's really right wing and does lots of right wing things, that kind of thing. Anyway. Um, yeah. So, you know, I'm the fact that his supporters will grandstand about the dishonesty, corrupting British politics. And yet this guy, he's leader of the Labour Party, is um, has just brazenly lied. Let's just have a little look. Here's one example. Here's one example. I made a commitment to nationalisation. I never made a commitment to nationalisation. First of all, raise your hands if you're into scrapping tuition fees. That's everyone. Renationalising water and electricity. Yeah. It's just a lie. What he said, he said, I never made a commitment to nationalisation. That, that was with Laura Kunzberg after the leadership election. So he said on national television, I never made a commitment to nationalisation. But in the leadership contest, you saw what he did. Don't say, you know, you, you don't think to yourself, I can't trust my lying eyes. You saw what happened. He was asked, do you support nationalisation? He stuck his hand up. Have heard people on saying, well, that's not a commitment. Are you joking? Um, and he said in the, in the 10 pledges, um, about common ownership. And I know they they use common ownership because they could weasel out and think, well, actually, common ownership can mean something else. It said explicitly that these utilities must be in public hands, public hands, not making profit for private. So obviously it was about that nationalization. So that's just a lie. He lied. It's, it's, I'm sorry, he, there's no way of cutting it. That is a lie. He lied in order to be leader of the Labour Party. He said he supported nationalization. And because then they go, his supporters, well, things have changed since then. Yes, there's more of a case for nationalisation of energy now than there was before. And you shouldn't just be throwing bungs at a broken system rather than dealing with the underlying problems, which is ownership. Um, but in any case, he lied because he said he didn't make a commitment to nationalisation, but he did. 
Here's, let's just have another example. It's really important you get politicians to come out and support you uh, and stand with you in this. So I'm very proud uh, to do that, to be with you this morning and to support you through this campaign, both as the local MP for here, but also in the shadow cabinet uh, and as running as leader of the Labour Party, because my leadership, if I win it, will be standing with you and other campaigns like you so that we can win issues like this that are so important. Thank you very much indeed. But, oh, I mean, come on, just co come on, come on. He said, that was a leadership contest, that as leader of the Labour Party, he'd be out, he's saying he'd be out supporting striking workers on picket lines. And as Shadow Cabinet Minister, he did, by the way, go onto those picket lines. And then he says, as leader of the Labour Party, no, a responsible party government cannot go on picket lines, and I forbid any front bench minister, Shadow Minister, from doing that. That is dishonesty. There's no way you can get around that. Because actually in the leadership contest as well, he made a pledge to support trade unions. He said, we will stand, work closely with trade unions, all the rest of that. Do you think trade unions on strike think the Labour Party is working closely with them? Obviously they don't. Now, just here's, here's some other examples. I mean, it's just ridiculous, to be honest. Pay tribute to Jeremy Corbyn, who led our party through some really difficult times, who energised our movement, and who's a friend as well as a colleague. We have to show we're the party of the Green New Deal, where we no longer have the question or the debate, well, it's good for the economy, but bad for the environment. Not anymore. If it's bad for the environment, it's bad for the economy. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn made our party the party of anti-austerity, and he was right to do so. The party that would fight cuts to public services. He made us the party that wanted to invest more heavily in our public services. And he was right to do so. And we must retain that. We build on that. We don't trash it as we go forward. We should treat, if you like, the 2017 manifesto as our foundational document. The radicalism and the hope that that inspired across the country was real. Anybody who knocked on a door in that election knows it was real. So we have to hang on to that as we go First forward. First of all, raise your hands if you're into scrapping tuition fees. That's everyone. We now but we did that one. I mean, look, come on, come on. Ridiculous. He says, don't trash the last few years under Corbynism. Praises, uh, you know, that shift um, on domestic policy and calls the 2017 manifesto the foundation document. Since then, he said, those, ma those manifestos are absolutely completely scrapped, bunk, not drawing on them. I mean, and, and, and abandoning the key policy pledges commit within them. It's just being dishonest. It's lying. It's lying to people in order to win. Now, I know people, the response to this essentially is, well, you know, the left aren't legitimate political actors. It's good politics to lie to the left. It's good politics to deceitfully uh, find ways of crushing them. And that's what a lot of the British media think, which is why he gets away with it. I mean, it is interesting. He is now getting scrutinised on this. Because his dishonesty was so wanton on such a grand scale that it would be ludicrous if the media didn't question him on it. And they have done, including on the Jeremy Vine show, which I'm glad they did. But as you can see, the, the argument that I made that he's a con man, which I stand by, because, again, gaining someone's confidence and trust on a false premise, which you then duplicitously, you abandon the promises you made uh, when you've got into a position purely on the back of misplaced uh, confidence, you're being a con man. You are. I mean, what else is it? It's confidence trickery. It's deception. It's lies. It's dishonesty. So what I said in that video was correct. And Keir Starmer didn't respond to it because he doesn't have a valid response to it. When he says conditions have changed, the economy's changed, how does that apply to striking workers? Right? He, he kind of, what, what's changed in British society for him to go, in the leadership contest, I'll be standing with you on picket lines. To being leader, I forbid anyone from going on picket lines. What's changed? Nothing has changed other than he doesn't have to appeal to Labour Party members in order to win. I know people go, well, every leader, you know, has to speak to members to get elected and then they pivot to the general public. But if you look, I mean, firstly, that doesn't mean just lying, <laughs> just lying on an epic scale. And secondly, on these issues about nationalisation, the vast majority of people support nationalisation, including most Conservative voters. I mean, you know, it's just because people can see how the privatised model is broken. The vast majority of people support higher taxes on the rich. 
Like, we can talk about the failures of Corbynism. I've read a book about it. Um, and what went wrong. It, the idea, it was people on their, you know, their doorsteps going, well, I was going to vote Labour, but I really, really like my privatised railway system. And, ooh, I don't think the rich should pay any more tax. They're having ever such a hard time. It's, it's just a fantasy. I mean, these are popular ideas and policies or tuition fees. People don't think young people should be sad with debt for the audacity to believe in a university education society benefits from. So basically, I stand by what I said. Keir Starmer is a con man. He's a liar. He's dishonest. He cheated his way to the Labour leadership. And the fact they're doing well in the polls now has nothing to do with anything they've done. Keir Starmer's uh, ratings, I think he's on minus 25. I don't think anyone would call that particularly popular, would you? Um, the reason Labour doing well, and I speak as, I'll vote for Labour in the next election. A lot of you probably think I'm an absolute sucker for doing that. But I do, I've always voted Labour. I voted Labour under Tony Blair, Gordon Brown, uh, Ed Miliband, Jamie Corbyn, and Keir Starmer. I've always voted. And like a lot of my detractors who were voting for effing Lib Dems not that long ago, by the way, always interesting on Twitter, people, these Starmer bots go, oh, you're a Tory, you're a Tory fifth columnist. And, and then there's always these accounts that just check their um, Twitter from 2019 where they're like, I will never vote for Jamie Corbyn's Labour Party. I don't care what the consequences are. You know, it's just pff, these people. Brazen. Um, yeah, but nonetheless, I will vote as a basis of a lesser evil because I think um, the gap between Labour and the Tories now is too small, but millions of people live in the gap. Um, you know, I think what is insufficient um, change is still better than what the Tories are going to do. And I know lots of you don't agree with me on that, but until the electoral system changes, that's what I think. And that's why we need extra parliamentary movements like Enough is Enough to put pressure on the Labour leadership. But, you know, nonetheless, I'm an independent commentator. My job is to tell you the truth. My job is to say what's actually happening. My job is not to be comical Ali for a leadership which has systematically lied to you, to the Labour Party membership, and lies to the country because he just keeps saying he didn't make commitments, which he did. All the reasons for them have changed. So that's my response to Keir Starmer. I, I think what I've said, people will say, well, you're using quite aggressive language. Sometimes you've just got to say it as it is. You know, you shouldn't tiptoe around um, things and because that's dishonesty. If I'm not telling you about Keir Starmer's dishonesty, I'm implicitly lying to you. Uh, you know, that's lying by omission. That's just, you know, that's giving an impression which is false and misleading. So, you know, if a politician wants to lie, I'm not saying they should be arrested for it, but there should be a cost. There should be consequences. Because if politicians think they can just lie with no consequences, then obviously democracy itself begins to collapse because you can no longer trust that anything a politician says. And therefore, why would you engage in the political process? Because you just think, well, what's the point of voting? I don't know what I'm going to get. It's a potluck. So that's my view. That's why I've said what I said. I stand by what I said. And um, if Keir Starmer's uh, really, I don't care what supermarket they shop at. They're the most tedious people online. They're humorless, awful people who don't believe in anything. I don't mean all Keir Starmer supporters, by the way. Uh, you know, I've got friends who support Keir Starmer, would you believe? Um, I'm talking about his online army, the sorts of people who went, oh, Corbynism's a cult, Corbynism's a cult, and then spend their waking hours uh, denouncing anyone who just says the objective truth that like Keir Starmer lied to become Labour leader, calling them Tories and Tory enablers and all the rest of it, as though British politics revolves around their tweets. Um, you know, that's the truth. And you can lie if you want. If you want to be Kamala Ali for Keir Starmer and his leadership, if you want to go around telling people things which aren't true for party political reasons, be honest with yourself, that's all you're doing. You can do that. I ain't going to do it. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm always going to tell the truth. And if you don't like it, tough, suck it up.